Yeah, so the, the new faster data rates are typically gonna be a PAM4 modulation, pulse amplitude modulation four. So instead of just measuring one eye of the eye diagram to see the performance of the channel, you have to measure three eyes. And as subsequently, there's going to be many different rise time signals and fall time signals and jitter signals that need to be added to the normally heavy load of, of the tested measurement techniques for compliance and validation. Great. Ian. Yeah, so most of the signal integrity challenges will be reflections from impedance discontinuities. There'll be insertion loss from perhaps lossy dielectric material. So remember, it's all zeros and ones, and as you transition from a zero level to a one level, the faster the rise time, the more reflections become a problem. So you have to mitigate that by doing um, reactive compensation. So you may have to add some inductance to a via, or you may have to subtract a little bit of capacitance in a transmission line. These are just things on PCB layout that need to be looked at and analyzed carefully. Yeah, so there's always this, uh, this design cycle where you, before you build something, you simulate it to predict what the performance will be. This gives you a very good idea of what problems will pop up once you build a prototype. So S parameters, which stand for scattering parameters, gives you a way to accurately characterize the transmission and reflection properties that can be used in simulation programs to give you what what if performance levels. Then once you have your prototype built, you can do real measurements compared to the simulations and then refine all of your models. So going forward, when you know the data rates will increase even further, you have that experience from the simulation and the measurement correlation to move to even faster speeds, which are inevitable for today's internet infrastructure. Yeah, so this is kind of the uh, religious question. Uh, time domain reflectometry is an oscilloscope-based measurement technique, and if you're a high-speed digital engineer, that's typically your instrument of choice. If you happen to be a microwave engineer, uh, where you have high-frequency um, frequency domain information uh, in your education, you tend to look toward the vector network analyzer to make the same measurements. And basically, you can take the result from either one and either do a fast Fourier transform or inverse fast Fourier transform to get the same data in either domain. The bottom line um, is that the vector network analyzer will give you better dynamic range. So ultimately, if you have a choice and you're familiar with both, you most likely will choose the VNA. So you can look at it in either domain, but in particular, if you have a, a high crosstalk environment, you need to pull a small signal out of the noise, and that can only be accomplished with an instrument that has high dynamic range, and that's the VNA, because it's, it's got a very narrow half power bandwidth on the receiver, so you can look at very low noise floors, and, and you'll be able to spot that, that crosstalk. Otherwise, if you use too broad of a, a bandwidth instrument, perhaps like the TDR, the, the crosstalk is gonna be buried in the noise and you just won't see it. Yeah, so all instruments have uncertainty and, and some of them are systematic and, and some are due to the environment. And so the, the calibration techniques of the vector network analyzer are always a bit more um, sophisticated, I might say, um, because of the high frequency content that needs to be accurate. You can have a, a, like a short open load through calibration that will give uh, the most accurate information at the reference plane. The, the TDR calibration is still there, but it, it's not as versatile perhaps as the VNA. So um, again, TDR is a great tool for getting the intuitive feeling for what's going on in, in a circuit or interconnect. But ultimately, if, if your, your accuracy is, is the main component, the VNA is usually the instrument of choice.
So high dynamic range, um, sophisticated calibration techniques. Um, you can have a scalable VNA like the Pixie VNA that can be easily configured from anywhere from two ports up to 32 ports. And this gives you incredible flexibility both in manufacturing and the R&D lab. So if you have six differential channels on one motherboard, that's uh, 12 input and 12 output. So that's a 24 port measurement. You could do that with one single instrument with a, a scalable VNA. I found doing both domains, time and frequency, is invaluable. And, and the reason I say that is because when you, when, you can it, when you can be versatile enough in both domains, it's like speaking two languages, you can look at time domain data to get the impedance profile and identify uh, not only uh, how much excess capacitance you have in a via, but where that via is located spatially within the channel. Then you can switch to frequency domain and you can look at insertion loss and see what frequencies are being attenuated due to that via capacitance. So, so using these two domains in, in parallel give you um, a whole different insight into optimizing your design for high speed. So um, if you happen to be at DesignCon like we are this week, you can stop by our booth to take a look at some of this. Uh, but the, the Vector Network Analyzer, uh, we have a very large portfolio of benchtop, portable, um, scalable, and um, frequency ranges from 9 gigahertz all the way up to 120 gigahertz. Uh, and, and the most helpful tool that I found for high-speed digital engineers is an application for signal integrity called Physical Layer Test System Software. And this basically is built for the digital design engineer that will allow them to make a VNA do backflips without really having to be a, a frequency domain expert. So uh, MOI stands for Method of Implementation. And it's basically a recipe book for how to make a particular measurement for any application. And so it, it's a, uh, typically a document, a Word document that has pictures and step-by-step -step instructions for how and which buttons you press so that you can really have a, a, a technician level person run through a, a very sophisticated measurement if they follow the MOI word for word. And so this is typically how uh, different protocol is used for devices under test.